can't tell you how many times a person has thought that a cop was going to be benevolent and let them out of a situation and they use their own statement to create a different crime than what they were stopped for. Y'all follow me on that? Yeah, see you. So mm-hmm. here you are and you have grandmama's prescription in the car. You understand? Uh-huh. And yeah. grandmama's prescription and slipped up in a couple of pills and fell in between the seats. So now I got lower tab in the car. All right? Yeah. And so now I'm being pulled over. Cop pulls me out the car. He either sees the lower tab or somehow he gets into doing some type of illegal search and he finds, guess what, lower tab. So here's a black man in possession of a controlled substance Damn. in the middle of the night. So I start to ex- I start to explain. Well, I got a story, officer. Uh, see, I drive my grandmother and my grandmother is on lower tab. Oh, and, and what happened was it spilled between the seats. So now the affidavit was, turns into Damn. male is knowingly in possession of illegal, illegal substance. substance. Damn. By admission, he knew it was in the vehicle. Ooh. He had a hundred and some odd dollars on him at the time. And now you're dealing with street values for drugs and you don't even buy drugs. Damn. So just keep Some your mouth shut. Yeah, shit, boy. Just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and by the time you get to court, I'm just gonna walk into court with grandmama's prescription and the title of the car, and then we all go home. But because you sat up there and you gave all these admissions, your affidavit now looks like something that came out of a the best fiction novel from Tyler Perry. Mm. Keep your mouth shut. One of our uh, one of our listeners asked how constitutional are curfews if you're familiar with that can you give us some insight on that what do you think well that is a very gray area most people will say it's not but it's a gray area because what you're doing is most curfews function on the basis of an emergency um in a state of emergency that's allocated by a governor or by whoever your elected officials are okay Mm -hmm. And they can make a demand that people be in at certain times because of uh, community safety, okay? And it's supposed to be geared at uh, a group. Sure. Okay, large groups. It's not necessarily geared at a person. Now, because of the coronavirus, we're starting to see all of these curfews come up where being used for other things. Yes. Mm, that's the fun part. But if a person is engaged in a necessity, like I gotta go to the hospital or something is wrong, the curfew is supposed to have some type of exception to allow them to function for livelihood. So is it lawful? Yes. When you get into the court, are they gonna uphold it? It's gonna to be those, it's gonna be one of those little dirty little things they let walk out the back door with a dismissal. Mm-hmm. Now, if you use the curfew, if you use the curfew to do something else. That's when you're going to start seeing real problems arise. Okay, like I know that I'm in a curfew, but I'm gonna put this uh, my constitutional right to have a um, to have a gathering there. Now you're gonna be bumping heads. So now they're gonna ask what type of conduct is happening within that gathering, and is that a criminal behavior? But they're not gonna use that to bring a criminal charge. And if they do, it's not gonna survive. It's not gonna survive. It's I call it in my opinion. In my opinion, it's a legal farce. It's an order to comply that if you don't, it's more a civil issue than it is a criminal issue. Okay. They're going to be hard. They're going to be real hard pressed to take you to, 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 to jail and make that stick. It's probably not going to stick at all. Unless they say it's tied to some type of illegal act, like a vandalism, a theft of property, uh, you know, that assault or something like that. And even then it's not going to make it. You guys, man, I know you got questions, man. Go ahead and uh, jump in. I don't have a question, but the one thing that uh, he spoke on is when we get pulled over by the cops. Uh, I was having a conversation the other day about with someone about that type of situation as a black man, the tension that I feel the moment that I see them fucking lights behind me, how my blood pressure goes up and I immediately feel attacked that my defenses go up. Literally, I, I, I there's a fear that just goes straight through me and I think that fear at times can be paralyzing to the point that it fucks with the decisions that we make next. Uh, that a lot of times I see brothers, 
you know, on these videos and shit that we see all over social media where these guys get in arguments back and forth and they're real combative off the gate with the cop. So and I'll be like, the problem. Yeah. And, and most just, of the times they're giving so them lose, stuff lose. That doesn't exist. They, they, they're giving them laws that are not applied correctly in sure, sure. But again, you're giving it to somebody who doesn't even know the law. That's the part I'm trying to get people to see. Do you think somebody that has spent uh, a year worth of college, an associate's degree, uh, knows the nuances of Arizona v. Gantt, Wong Song v. United States? No. Do you think they know the Fourth Amendment, the Eleventh Amendment? Do you think they understand qualified immunity? Do you think they get that? No. no. All they're doing is pointing, and they got a little book, and they're trying to figure out which one of these boxes I can check that fits what I think you did. Yeah, yeah. And if you give them an excuse, they're going to check every single one of them. Yeah, yeah. So what I tell people is try your best not to be hostile and recognize that you're going to play the long game. Now, what I do when I see a cop is different from what everybody else does because I'm ignorant, okay? <laughs> and um, you got more money than the rest of us. <laughs> and he's a cop, but that's the damn reason. I see a cop. <laughs> I see a cop, man. It, it just turned into a game of Jeopardy. This is Wheel of Fortune. Let's see what we can get out of this you know, you know, cop pulled me over. I got time. Let's do this. You know? uh, see, I, okay, I'm going to tell you what I did. This is a side note. On my uh, license, I deliberately take a picture with me smiling. The goofiest smile I can make like this. Just why do I do that? I have no idea. This is why I do that. Because the psychology of me smiling and handing him a deal says that I am non hostile. Okay? He sees it, and when he comes to the car, I match that. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Mr. Campbell, you were going 20 miles over the speed limit. Oh, what? Really? Oh, man, I guess that diarrhea is doing it today. And. This <laughs> what? Because what I do is I recognize them at their most human, personal levels, and I don't challenge who they think they are. I let them mm. be that. If you think you Superman with a cape, nigga, fly on. Yeah, yeah. And I said yeah, that yeah. correctly. Yeah, fly yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fly <laughs> if you on. you think yeah. you Wonder Woman with a lasso, go yeah. lasso the front bumper of the car. My deal now is to get home and get out the way. Because yeah. I know when I get you in that courtroom, you go. Oh, that's just mine. I'm Superman at that point in time. I yeah. see you. I but see the you. minute that you begin to challenge whoever their ideology of themselves is, no matter how perverted it is, you're going to run into a short game problem. Yeah. Because they got a radio, you don't have a radio. They have a gun. Nine times out of 10, we're not going to pull a gun on the cop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And so you have to recognize the scenario that you're playing in. And if you decide to engage in a game of checkers, and they got a game of chess going on right there in the street, you're not going to win. So give them the street, give it to them. And then when you get out the street, you wear their asses out.